tripping. And you about to get a bag. You about to get a bag. You about to get a bag. We about to get a bag. We about to get a bag. We all want to get a bag. I wanted to preface this video with a very important disclaimer. There have been multiple times in NBA history where the Golden State Warriors dynasty was in absolute jeopardy, whether it was specific core pieces leaving or signing a superstar player and then having him leave or pretty much rebuilding while contending again. And I think the biggest and most important one of all is the fact that there have been multiple instances where players sustained injuries that could have completely altered their career. And through it all, the Warriors were able to get through it. So when I say that this could be the end of the Golden State Warriors, I'm saying this could be the end of the Golden State Warriors, not this will be the end. There's multiple ways that this scenario can play out. Our source for this entire topic is from a very trusted source, The Athletic. You guys know how we feel about The Athletic. So before we get to the content, make sure you drop a like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. If you want shorter versions of this content, make sure you follow me on Instagram and TikTok at the flight mic for both. Now that we get all that out of the way, cue the intro. Mike check one, two, one, two. What going on everybody golden state warriors have been one of the most revolutionary teams over the past decade there's no one that's going to challenge you on that take i mean in the earlier part of the 2010s they completely changed the way basketball was being played you have the houston rockets literally obsess over how to beat the golden state warriors over their own game and to their credit they were very close but they weren't able to do it once the golden state warriors seem to have fallen apart after making it to multiple nba finals in the middle of the 2010s, some with Kevin Durant, some without Kevin Durant. It seemed like in the 2019 NBA Finals versus the Toronto Raptors, the wheels came falling off the wagon. Klay Thompson tore his ACL. Kevin Durant tore his Achilles. Two absolutely terrifying injuries in one series. And of course, the Golden State Warriors lost that NBA Finals. Since then, the Warriors were in a fairly strange place. I mean, that offseason, they hit one of their lower points, a superstar player player that was on their team wanted to sign with a different team now that his contract was expired. What the Warriors did with that was they executed a sign and trade, sending Kevin Durant to the Brooklyn Nets, receiving D'Angelo Russell in return, and eventually trading D'Angelo Russell to the Minnesota Timberwolves for a player that was deemed to be a draft bust in Andrew Wiggins. A move that I personally saw being very successful because I thought at the very minimum Andrew Wiggins would step into the Harrison Barnes role, but I also felt like he was going to be placed in a situation where he'd be able to improve as a shooter tremendously. Maybe the Warriors would tell him to stop taking so many freaking pull-up mid-range jumpers and opt for higher percentage shots. On top of that, I thought once you have Clay Thompson and Steph Curry and Draymond Green on the basketball court at the same time, you're going to have your game open up a little bit more. Andrew Wiggins has tremendous success at slashing to the rim, and he was able to do that at his will once the Warriors got fully healthy. In addition to that, they were able to draft James Wiseman with the number two overall pick. They opted not to replace Klay Thompson with LaMelo Ball, and they were able to add a tremendous infusion of youth to their team in addition to James Wiseman. I mean, the year before, they were able to draft Jordan Poole, a player that we couldn't have imagined having a breakout like the way he broke out over the past season. And once the Golden State Warriors were fully healthy, it seemed like they were the Golden State Warriors plus. I mean, yes, you don't have Kevin Durant anymore, but in place of that, you have tremendous depth and a bright future to look forward to. A future that is so bright that Bob Myers wouldn't trade Jonathan Kaminga, Moses Moody, James Wiseman, and Andrew Wiggins for Kevin Durant. Technically, he couldn't trade Andrew Wiggins for Kevin Durant even if he wanted to because of the rookie max contract rule. So Mike, we already know all of this. Why are you telling us all of this? Well, there comes a point where if you're a successful team that is able to achieve the task that is very difficult to achieve, by the way, of being able to consistently nail your draft picks, consistently 
develop them into really good players at a specific point or another, those players will want to be paid. But there's multiple things that could cause the demise of the Golden State Warriors. One thing that I originally thought, and I didn't end up releasing this video because I personally thought it was far-fetched. I didn't think it was going to be something that we'd see happen for maybe another two or three years, or maybe once the core of Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Draymond Green are officially gone, was maybe Steve Kerr would opt for retirement, and that's the reason why Kenny Atkinson ended up staying with the Golden State Warriors as an assistant. Ultimately, I wasn't really convinced that was the case. That was too conspiracy theorist of me for me to end up releasing that video. But this current issue that the Warriors have is a significantly larger threat than Steve Kerr potentially retiring and having a great head coach like Kenny Atkinson taking over. So Anthony Slater and Marcus Thompson of The Athletic dropped a remarkable article. Make sure you check it out. I'll give you some excerpts here, but it's called Warriors Financial Collision Course. Four players, four tough contract decisions. So you guessed it. The collapse of the Golden State Warriors could come at the hands of the fact that all of these players that are pretty freaking good, might I add, are going to want contract extensions. And not just any contract extensions, they're probably going to want to get paid big money. The article opens up by saying an easy answer exists. Joe Lacob won't like it, but it's there for the Warriors, a way for all parties to be happy, to feel appreciated, to be free to focus exclusively on defending their championship. That solution is pay everybody. Draymond Green, Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole, and Clay Thompson. Reward all of them with hefty contract extensions, locking in the Warriors core for several extra seasons. No CBA rule prevents it, but that just isn't viable for the franchise, sources indicate. Extending all those players would lock in astronomical luxury tax penalties, slingshotting their total bill, salary plus tax, well above the record $362 million that they paid this last season. They'd be entering a stratosphere that Lacob transparently has said that he's unwilling to touch. The thing is, in the past, whenever a owner of an NBA franchise has the opportunity to compete for a championship, more often than not, you're going to be in luxury tax. More often than not, surprisingly, you're probably going to go negative if your team wins a championship. The reason why ownership doesn't necessarily mind paying that extra money and going negative, which by the way, would be a horrific business venture if you're just thinking of basic business economics is every championship won raises the value of your team, raises the value of your brand. This is something that the Los Angeles Lakers were able to do phenomenally in the 80s. I mean, you still to this day have people purchasing Magic Johnson jerseys, Kobe Bryant jerseys. Hell, I just purchased this custom Shaquille O'Neal jersey. Have you ever wondered why Los Angeles Lakers fans will purchase Shaquille O'Neal's jersey despite the ugly breakup he had in 2005 with the Los Angeles Lakers and the rivalry he had with Kobe Bryant during that time? It's because he's won multiple championships and MVPs with the Los Angeles Lakers. That's the reason why you'll buy Shaq's jersey, but you probably don't even want to touch Russell Westbrook's Los Angeles Lakers jersey. You probably won't buy an Allen Iverson Detroit Pistons jersey. And the same applies for the Golden State Warriors currently. Every championship won, every successful season they have raises the value of their franchise significantly. So in the short term, they're going to go negative, but in the long term, it's going to pay off in a great way for the Golden State Warriors. But at a specific point, this investment isn't sustainable for an NBA owner. And here's where things get a little difficult because you have to essentially choose between paying Draymond Green and Klay Thompson huge contracts. But if you do that, you probably can't pay Jordan Poole and Andrew Wiggins what they deserve. And they're significantly younger. Their best years are still ahead of them. The article even says, if you give Wiggins an extension that starts around $33 million that he's currently making, then give Jordan Poole an extension that starts around the $27 million range, then you bump Draymond Green, who has a player option, into his decline and extend max of a $30.9 million starting salary. Thompson is already making $43.2 million that season. So that means the total payroll will be $222 million for the Warriors, and the projected tax line is going to be $161 million. The Warriors are willing to pay their players, but their enemy is the collective bargaining agreement and its luxury tax rules. The Warriors are living in the more punitive repeater tax. Crunch the numbers and you're talking about a total bill salary plus tax of around $564 million. Joe Lacob even indicated that $400 million was too steep. So the article then goes through each and every player's situation. And here's the thing that's a little difficult. It seems like the veterans, especially Draymond Green, still want max money which is absolute in
insanity. Check this out. Draymond Green, according to sources, wants and believes that he deserves a maximum contract extension from the Golden State Warriors. August 3rd is when he is eligible to sign a four-year deal, and that is his desired length. Of course that's his desired length. Draymond Green just put together one of his worst seasons of his career, and it's not necessarily any fault of his own. I mean, his best years are clearly behind him at this point. So of course he wants to be paid max contract money. In the past, Draymond Green was a phenomenal defensive player and the heart and soul of the Golden State Warriors. And at the very minimum, he would be able to hit the occasional three. Currently, I would say that Draymond Green isn't necessarily as viable of a three-point shooter. He is still a tremendous defensive player, but giving him a max contract extension when you have multiple players that you need to pay max contract money to isn't viable. Draymond Green is set to make $25.8 million this coming season. He is due $27.5 million for 2023 to 2024, but it's a player option. He can decline it and become a free agent next summer, so the maximum extension Green could sign starting next week involves him opting out of the final year of his deal and signing a four-year extension worth $138.4 million. His starting number for a max extension is only $3.4 million higher than his option year. Not nothing, but certainly not a ridiculous raise or an uncontrollable tax file. Including this coming season, a max contract would lock in Draymond Green for $164.2 million over the next five seasons, and he'd turn 37 years old in the final season. All indications, though, are that the Warriors have no plans to offer Green a maximum extension, and there isn't any current traction on any type of extension. The typical pattern of this Golden State front office is to extend with one year remaining. Even Steph Curry waited until one year remained before signing his max extension last off season. Green has two years remaining on the maximum extension he signed in 2019. While he could opt out a year earlier, the Warriors' current preference is to talk extension with Draymond Green next summer. The question becomes, how does Green respond? No one wants an unhappy Draymond Green in the locker room. He's the team's biggest voice. His presence is felt unlike any other player. When he's fired up, when he's angry, when he's frustrated, and when he's contrite. How would he handle being told no extension after his stellar defense anchored an improbable run to another champion? Does he demand a trade? Does he again take less money than he wants? Does he go public with his intentions to opt out and leave the Warriors in free agency? Does he pour less into the younger players and essentially stop grooming his replacements? This could get very toxic at this point. And props to Slater and Thompson because they mentioned a very important point. How would Steph Curry feel about this situation? How would Green's loss impact the Golden State Warriors moving forward? But even more so, just speaking from business, what would the market be for Draymond Green? Let's say you're a struggling, rebuilding team that really wants a guy that is the heart and soul of their defense. Say you're the OKC Thunder, which you aren't necessarily struggling, but you're not necessarily contending either. How much are you willing to pay a player like Draymond Green, who's tremendous on defense, but at the same time is not the three-point shooter he used to be and is kind of a black hole offensively unless if he's put in the Golden State Warriors offense? Draymond Green in the Golden State Warriors Warriors need each other. And the article even says that Steph Curry sees the Warriors big three as a package deal, while much of the talk last season was about the Warriors plan to win and develop simultaneously. It isn't lost on the veteran core how that plan disappeared in the postseason. It was all on them again, with the help of some critical vets. And that's just Draymond Green, man. We're not even talking about players that are in their prime yet. I'm going to group Draymond Green with Klay Thompson, because Klay Thompson's situation is a special case. Klay Thompson has two years and $83.8 million guaranteed left on his deal, and he's probably not going to get an extension this offseason. He's probably not complaining about that since he's only played 32 games since his contract extension. The Golden State Warriors really need someone to take a discount. I don't think there's a more likelier candidate that would be willing to take a discount than Klay Thompson, considering that he got paid the amount he got paid during his two major injuries that, with all due respect, man, props to the Warriors for not giving up on Clay, but I've seen teams give up on players once they've sustained a torn Achilles. The Warriors stayed true to Clay Thompson after he tore his ACL and extended him immediately, and they still backed him up while he tore his Achilles. He got paid a tremendous sum of money just to rehab his Achilles, so I would say that Clay Thompson would be the most likely to take a pay cut in this instance. Then you have two emerging stars for the Golden State Warriors, one being Andrew Wiggins, who has been a remarkable two-way player who ironically got 
got paid a rookie maximum contract extension with the Minnesota Timberwolves just in hopes that he would develop only to get traded to the Warriors and finally developing right before he's in line for another contract extension. Andrew Wiggins is so important to what the Golden State Warriors do. He's the perfect two-way wing to flank Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. He was pivotal in shutting down Jason Tatum during the NBA Finals and before that they stuck him on Luka Doncic in the Western Conference Finals and it resulted in a sweep. Look, I know we could talk about the Dallas Mavericks not having as many weapons as the Golden State Warriors, but you have to admit, Andrew Wiggins has developed tremendously during his time with the Warriors. He made it to an all-star game this past year, and he's just 27. He doesn't turn 28 for another six months. So you can make the argument that you haven't even seen Andrew Wiggins' prime yet. Andrew Wiggins might also be another individual that would be willing to take a slight pay cut in order to stay with the Golden State Warriors. Warriors. And I'm not saying a gigantic pay cut, but a tiny one just so they could keep the core together. The reason being because he knows what it's like to be on a losing franchise that doesn't necessarily have any championship ambitions. He knows what it's like to be on a team that has no idea how to develop him whatsoever. So understanding that taking a little less money to stay in a culture like the Golden State Warriors in order to consistently improve upon your game and even have a spot in this league to begin with would be something that I'd assume Andrew Wiggins would understand in order to keep his career going. And then finally, you have Jordan Poole. October 18th is the rookie extension deadline, but the Warriors are expected to engage with Poole's representation before then. There doesn't appear to be a level of urgency as August nears, and the deadlines do breed deals. It's not too difficult to project Jordan Poole's market. Anthony Simons just re-upped in Portland for four years and $100 million. Jalen Brunson just left the Mavericks to accept a four-year one $104 million contract from the New York Knicks. Jordan Poole is viewed in a similar realm, and if the final few months of his third season are any indication, he could have a higher upside than both. He averaged 24.7 points on 47% overall and 41.9% from three in the regular season's final 21 games, filling in as a starter after Steph Curry went down. He made an NBA high 85 threes in March and April combined. He led the NBA in free throw percentage for the season. What I think going to happen with Jordan Poole is he might be in a DeAndre Ayton-like situation. The Warriors are going to try to work out a contract extension with him, but I feel like this is an instance where it'd be a little bit too difficult for Jordan Poole to accept less money to remain on a contender when he could go to a different team and pretty much be the face of a brand new franchise that is willing to pay him top dollar to do so. I feel like it's going to be a situation where some team's going to sign him to a crazy offer sheet. The Warriors are not going to be able to match that offer sheet, and as a result, Jordan Poole might leave the Golden State Warriors. But if you ask me, keeping even three out of these four players while you still have Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga and you have James Wiseman isn't necessarily the worst case scenario, especially if some of your vets and some of the individuals on this list are willing to take a little bit of a pay cut. But if you ask me, if more volatile personalities prevail and I guess people get too greedy about this situation, then you could see the end of the Golden State Warriors dynasty. So let me know in the comment section down below if you're a Warriors fan. Is this something that concerns you? What do you think is the most likely scenario to occur? Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.